Okay, moving on now to the next stage of Sikhism. Sikh marriage and family life. We're going to look at Anand Karaj, which is the Sikh wedding ceremony. And the objective of the wedding ceremony, as opposed to, say, a more Western approach is to marry for love, the objective in Sikhism is to move two souls closer to Mukti, otherwise known as enlightenment, and moving them closer to Wahiguru, otherwise known as God. Now, the uh, this particular version of uh, weddings was set up by Guru Ramdas, and it uh, helps enhance a family orientated life, otherwise known as a, I think I'm pronouncing this right, a Gusathi. And that's a concept that was preached way back in the days of Guru Nanak. It's also used to uh, deepen faith, mostly through the Lavan prayer, which we'll get onto in a bit. And uh, through this, it also reminds a Sikh of their religious origin. In the case of the Lavan prayer, it reminds them of uh, Guru Ramdas. He's the one who set up the Lavan prayer. And it also creates a covenant bond between the husband and wife within the deeper context of creating that bond in, uh, with union with God. Quote for you there. Uh, this is probably the best one that I've found in terms of um, Anand Karaj. It's from Guru Ramdas. My marriage has been performed. Oh, my father, as Gurmukh, I have found the Lord. If you don't know what Gurmukh means, it's uh, you have uh, two concepts, Gurmukh and Manmukh. If you're Manmukh, then you are uh, tied into worldly possessions, material culture, all the rest of it. If you're Gurmukh, then you're more God-centered. So the way of which the Anand Karaj ceremony is conducted you have the, uh, it starts off with um, the two families. This is before the actual ceremony. This is actually before the actual wedding ceremony. This is um, before that. The two families will meet, uh, m most likely at the groom's house for something called a Milani, which is a formal meeting. And then they'll have a betrothal, which is the actual, um, the, the agreement on the marriage. On the day of the wedding, the groom and the bride will uh, perform Japji in the morning. Um, and the that's the star of the day, the start of the day, and the groom will uh, usually wear the five Ks. I'm pretty sure there are a few exceptions where that's the case, but it is mostly preferred uh, for him to wear the five Ks at this ceremony. Then they'll head to the Gurdwara and go to the Darbar Sahib. I think I've spelled Darbar Sahib wrong there. That's the room where the Guru Granth Sahib is kept. And then the groom will have the Adi Granth, not the Guru Granth Sahib, the Adi Granth, placed at his feet, and then the Asadiva, uh, I think it's a prayer or a hymn of some sort, that is uh, that is sung. And then um, the circling of the Guru Granth Sahib uh, starts. You will always, the, the Sikhs will always have their left side facing away from the Guru Granth Sahib, i.e. they will be circling it clockwise. And then here we are, the Lavan prayer. There are four stages to the Lavan prayer, and uh, the first one, is where you recognize that the center of marriage is spiritual and that Nam Simran is to be performed daily. This is for both um, the husband and wife. In the second stage, you realize that the center of marriage is with the guru and you are filled with joy and ecstasy. In the third stage of it, you uh, begin, ha uh, begin having an understanding that love and liberation are with the Sangat, which is the Sikh community. And in the fourth and final stage, couple become one soul in two bodies and the marriage is completely blended with love for God. Now if you um, uh, go on Google it won't take you long to actually find um, Guru Ramdas's uh, quotes for each stage of the Lavan prayer. It, it's something along the lines of uh, in the first stage blah 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 this happens in the second stage and so on. If you can remember those I, I would imagine that will get you a good few marks. Next up, we need to know the importance of Anand Karaj because uh, from what I've been looking at, they very rarely ask you for the um, for the form. It's mostly uh, the importance. It's very much an AO2 topic with debating on uh, is Anand Karaj important for seats today sort of question. So looking at the importance, yes, it is important. The objective of it is to move closer to God, to, uh, to attaining enlightenment. It's a spiritual ritual that dates back to the early gurus. No date is considered holier than the, the date of, of, uh, of your wedding in Sikhism. And the, one of the most important things, it enables eligibility to pass through the first canned. 
If you don't know what the cans are, there are... Oh dear, I think there's five or four. No, there's five. And uh, they, these are basically stages that you pass through in your in your life as a Sikh to attain enlightenment. I will be doing another video uh, later on key concepts in Sikhism. That The cans will be outlined in that much clearer. But uh, all you need to know for now is that when you marry, uh, you basically you, you've uh, begun your family orientated life which is Darren Kand which is the first Kand and that once you've gone through that that allows you to move on to the second and from there you can go through the third fourth fifth and so on another quote uh, this is from Guru Nanak union with the holy is my wedding date and separation from the world is my marriage and when we say separation I need to make this clear that is not uh, the same as uh, being an aesthetic and removing yourself from the world. That's a different. That's a different concept. Now, obviously, we know that in Sikhism, based on the preachings of Guru Nanak, they're not too keen on you being an aesthetic. You are to be with, um, integrated with society. You are. You're not to uh, run away from the world. There's another quote that I'll show you later that should make that a bit clearer. Moving on to family life, what we have here is a typical. Um, image of a Sikh family. They will uh, have the uh, the husband, the wife, the kids, and usually they will be living with the, with the parents of the husband. Now, Guru Nanak taught the concept of uh, total equality between the genders. This will be expanded on in a later video I'll do about um, inequality and Siva. But basically, in Sikh ideals, thanks to this concept that Guru Nanak taught, um, there is no, or there isn't supposed to be any... Um, patriarchal nature going on here. The husband is not to rule over the wife and vice versa. There is a hierarchy of age and uh, it's one where the elders are to be respected because they are treated um, as more wisdomous beings um, than the younger ones are. There's a quote from Nanak which I haven't put in here because uh, I can't remember word for word what it is, but it's something along the lines of basically the, the elders are more... Uh, that they are more experienced. They, they've been living with um, uh, an experience of Javan Mukti for much longer, so they are more in, in touch with Wahi Guru than the younger people are. It's usually um, it's usually uh, a common trait in Sikhism that the youngers are taught by the elders, and a uh, family in union basically helps with humans being in union with Wahi Guru as well, and. Uh, this is um, attained via Nam Japo. And, uh, oh, okay, now here's a decent quote about God and the elders being connected. The Lord has exposed the, I can't pronounce that, um, Pentient, I'll go with, uh, secret to the sin of the elders, Guru Ramdas. Now, this there's a story behind this, and it basically goes along the lines of there's, I'm just going to call it Pentient, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, he, he, this this fellow has... I believe he's committed a sin and he's not happy about it. And no one knows what the sin is, but basically Wahiguru has exposed this sin to the elders. And this this is a good quote I find with explaining in Sikhism the, the hierarchy of the elders being more respected. It sort of highlights that idea of uh, the elders are being more in touch with Wahiguru. Importance of family life. <clears throat> Once, uh, as we were talking about before, the first canned is reached. Through the family orientated life, the gates to the second kand are open. The second kand is Jian kand. It ensures that there are no aesthetic traits going on in the, in the family. Tradition is maintained. That's a very important one. And uh, another quote for you here, the householders assert their faith in the family life from Guru Arjan. That was the one I was on about before with uh, a quote. It wasn't from Nanak, sorry, it was from Guru Arjan about uh, not going off uh, into the into the <coughs> sorry into the wilderness and being an aesthetic. And finally, another quote from Nanak: Some attain union with the Lord, while others depart in separation. Again, that's showing that if you go go if you if you go ahead and separate yourself from the world, you're not likely to attain union with God. That is all I have. It's a difficult topic, I'll be honest. Um, marriage and family life, particularly the family life part of it. There's not a lot of resources out there, but if you go ahead and 
we search on Google. A, a good scholar to find will be um, W. Owen Cole. He, he knows his stuff about Sikhism, and I'm sure you'll be able to find uh, a decent amount of extra stuff if you think that you need more stuff. 